CFA level three edge fit prep program. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Russell Jude. I head up the program. And what I wanna do with this particular video, this intro video, is to look at the CFA level three program from two points of view. Number one is what you guys can expect from CFA level three from the CFA point of view, from the exam point of view, what they're gonna ask, how they're gonna ask, etc., etc. And then the second thing I'd like to look at is what edge fit as a prep provider can bring to the party to assist you of course in getting you through this particular level and then of course then uh, achieving your CFA charter this is the final step of course okay let's start off of course guys and welcome everybody to 2021 and remember of course guys that all three levels of CFA be they CFA level one two or three have all transitioned from 2020 okay for those that could write which is a paper-based testing approach now everything going forward guys be it level one two or three is CBT which is computer-based testing so no matter what level you're writing no matter how you're writing what you're writing if you're writing in 2021 okay you're writing on a computer okay that's been one of the big changes uh, from 2020. Of course, most of the guys, I think very few guys were actually able to write in 2020. There were a select few, but predominantly, okay, uh, COVID-19 closed down most of the 2020 writings. Okay. Um, so the two big changes that we can expect, okay, well, there's two or three big changes that one can expect for writing uh, CFA in 2021. Number one is you are writing on a computer. Okay, number two, I'm gonna take you through the exam format. That's also changed quite a little bit from what it was in the past, okay? And number three, okay, which we'll talk about a little bit later, okay, is there are no longer any fixed exam dates. We now talk about uh, exam windows. Okay, so I'm gonna talk through all of that as we go through this particular intro video, okay? And, uh, um, hopefully by the time we're done, you've got a good sense of what's in CFA level three um, to be able to uh, uh, prepare you for that. Okay, computer-based testing, guys, is exactly that. It's a computer-based, okay? You won't be writing any more uh, pens and pencils, paper, that's all gone. Everything now will be a comp on a computer, okay, um, in an exam center that they provide for you. So you'll, you'll, go, you'll go into your exam center, you'll be given a computer to write on, that'll be your computer for the particular session, okay, um, and all your answers will be on done on the computer. Okay, we have a look over here, and I want to move to number two, point number two in terms of the exam format. How has that changed from the past? Step number one, okay, one of the big changes from the past is in the past, I'm sure everybody remembers, okay, and this has changed, by the way, across all three levels of CFA. It used to be a 180-minute exam, a three-hour paper, okay, uh, for both exam one, okay, and for exam number two, they were three-hour papers, okay. What's changed is now they've all gone down from 180 minutes, okay, to 135 minutes, which makes it a two-hour, 15 exam both your first paper and both the second paper and what the CFA have come out and said is that they're quite comfortable okay that uh, in this particular amount of time two hours 15 as opposed to three hours in the past they are fully able to test each person's proficiency okay to be able to determine if they can move on to the next level or of course in your guys case to be able to achieve the charter Okay, so that's the, the old system of 180 minutes is now gone across all levels, okay, and that has now gone down to 2 hours 15. What does that do to your overall exam writing experience, okay? Uh, you'll come in in the morning, and I'm, I've just taken this uh, from the CFA level 1, guys. The first 30 minutes, just to get yourself, to show you what you can expect. Okay. It's the pledge, a bit of a tutorial, how things will run, a survey, CFA love survey, so you can expect that. I'm not sure this, this is exactly how it will be um, uh, for level three, but this is what they, they, they're showing us, giving us guidance for in CFA level one, which I assume, of course, um, will be the same then for um, 
CFI level two and of course CFI level three. Okay. Um, 135 minutes of writing your first paper, guys, and obviously this is the big change for you guys coming into CFA Level 3 from Level 2, which we'll talk about is your CR, your Constructed Response Paper. That is your paper number one. Okay, that's your first paper. Paper number two, the afternoon session, which we can call, it was not really an afternoon session, is uh, an MCQ paper, which is a carbon copy of what you would have expected in CFA Level Two, which you wrote in CFA level two, of course that's now changed as well how they examine that because remember guys, it's gone down from three hours to two hours fifteen. So I'll talk a little bit about that, okay, in terms of exam number two, exam session two, how you can expect the changes there to uh, uh, to be. Okay. I'm not going to talk too detailed in terms of exam session one, okay, uh, exactly the approach for that in too much detail. Of course, we'll do that as we go through the program, give you a great sense of how to answer constructive response questions. Remembering, of course, that everybody likes to call them the essay section, which I hate because it's not essays. It's by no means essays. In fact, it, it, it probably, if you had to ask my two cents worth, it probably penalizes people that answer things in terms of essay format. Okay, those that have got lovely eloquent English and choose to use it in this particular paper might well be at a disadvantage in how they answer this particular paper. Okay, but we'll talk much more about that as we go through the intro video and of course much more throughout the course and of course much more of course when we get to our revision and exam program. We'll show you exactly how to answer those. Okay, but in terms of constructive response, okay, there's going to be 8 to 11 uh, essay type questions, again I don't like the word essays, okay, just means more detailed questions, vignette questions, okay, and as opposed to answering them guys in terms of a multiple choice format, you now will be answering them in terms of a written response. And two major written responses come out of this particular um, section, okay, uh, from exam session one, either word based or calc based, okay, so you're going to get a bit of a scenario again, very similar to a bit of a vignette, and you're going to be asked questions based on that. Now, what they say is it's one mark per minute. Now, in the past it was 180 minutes, so it was 180 marks. Now it is 135 minutes. Okay, 135 minutes is equal to 135 marks is what you can expect in this paper, okay, it's quick, you've got to write quickly, there is no time in this particular paper to write nice uh, fancy English, eloquent English, Queen's English, there's not time for that, it's going to be point form, dot form, and you get in and you get out and you answer the question as quickly and effectively as possible as one mark per minute. If you are looking at uh, a roundabout, if you look over here, they say anywhere between 8 to 11 questions is what one can expect in this particular uh, paper. You're looking roundabout, okay, anywhere between 12 to 14 marks, roundabout approximately, okay, uh, per uh, question. But remember, when we say per question, you've got 8 to 11 questions. Those are your big questions. But within each question, it's broken down into three or four parts. And that's why we say it's not likely to be anything essay-ish. Okay? And the reason it's not likely to be anything essay-ish is, of course, because, for example, if I've got um, one question which is worth 14 marks, that's, that's my one question worth 14 marks, and that then is also broken down into four, it's about three marks per individual subsection. So there's not going to be essays here, guys. There's not. There's a lot of what they call over here, a lot of stuff is going to be justify your response. Mr. A has decided to invest. In, is that a good answer? Should he be justify your response? What kind of an investor is he? Justify, explain much more than what we've seen in the past in terms of your MCQs. Here it's a much more integrative approach and you really need to know your work very well to be able to justify your answers and where a lot of guys get stuck in level three is they start to waffle. They're not completely sure what's being asked and they waffle and waffle and waffle. No extra marks given for extra information. If they ask you for three bits of information, there's three marks. Three marks, three bits. If you give them six, you don't get any extra marks. 
Okay, they don't like what's called the shotgun approach, where you just try and shoot and try and get marks all over the show. Answer the exact question, of course, as it has been uh, asked. Okay, this is a calculation based, so they're going to be word based or calc based. Calc based. Let's say, for example, it's a four mark calc based, and the answer is a uh, hundred. If you put down a hundred, okay, they don't care how you got that. Okay, um, and then of course looking at your friend's computer, which of course we don't suggest, that's not uh, where you're going to get your answers from, but assuming you did all the workings and you get to 100, you wrote that down, and you wrote 100, you get four marks on a calc-based uh, uh, question. Okay, if your 100 is wrong, of course you get zero. Okay, so obviously that's why we always say show your workings, because then you can get part marks. Okay, so very advisable uh, to show your workings in any of these calculation-based answers because then you're going to get marks, part marks as you go along the process. Okay, um, what, what, what topics are covered in the exam session one, the constructed response? Well, they can cover anything. They don't give us exact guidance, guys, as to what will be and what won't be covered in that morning session, the exam session one, but typically there's a much greater weighting towards private wealth and institutional wealth. The, 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 those types of topics get much greater weighting than do the things like, for example, the various asset classes which we'll talk about going forward. Okay, so, but no, we can't tell you exactly if you cover private wealth and institutional wealth and perhaps asset allocation, okay, or capital markets, then yes, you are covered for this, this exam. No, we can't say that. Okay, <coughs> not, not correct at all. But typically what we do find is the asset classes as well as ethics tend to be put into exam session to the MCQs. Okay, good. Um, and of course, as I say, guys, we will spend much more time on this as we go forward in the program, um, dealing with how to answer these particular questions, teaching you how to write it to make sure you get the most amount of benefit, of course, guys, from your uh, uh, answering these particular particular questions. Okay, good. We move down to, uh, then you get a half an hour break, a 30 minute break, okay, which is always nice just to, get, to clear your head, okay. Uh, remember, in the past, you had a much longer break, okay, than half an hour, okay. But remember, again, the exam was much longer. You wrote for three hours instead of two hours, fifteen. So you had a much longer uh, break, bef uh, much longer exam. So you had a longer break. So just remember, guys, you're not going to get a massive break. It's a thirty-minute break. It's not long. It's optional, okay. Uh, but I do suggest, of course, that you take it. You clear your heads and come back strong, of course, for uh, exam session number two. Okay, now, how does exam session two MCQs change to, from what it was in the past? Remember, in the past, it was three hours. Now, it's two hours, 15. Now, if we just do a little bit of maths over here, nice and easy, you're going to see that, in fact, this works to your benefit. Okay, there is a, a very definite advantage over here. Not a huge advantage, but, it's, but we'll take what we can, of course. Now, remember, if you had uh, 135, now you've got 135 marks. Okay, you used to have 180 minutes. Okay, so 135 minutes over 180 minutes. And in the past, you used to have 60 MCQs. Remember that? Okay, in the past, okay, when you had three hour paper, you had 60 MCQs. If we do the maths, that comes out to be, you should get, proportionally, you should get 45 multiple choice questions. Okay, you are going to get 44. So that's why I say there is your slight little benefit, of course, you get a, a, an additional, you get one MCQ for free, okay? And of course they do that because remember, I'm going to show you this now, that the MCQs are based on either four or six. So exactly as it was in CFA level two, what you had, okay, uh, you used to have what we would call a vignette, a vignette was the story, okay? And that was typically followed by multiple choice questions, either four MCQs, okay, or they were followed by six MCQs, okay. And as you can see, of course, they couldn't give you 45 because 45 is not divisible, okay, by either the four or the six. So they went for 44, so the benefit is yours. Okay, so how many vignettes are we going to get? They don't tell us. Okay, but just by way of example, perhaps they could give you, okay, uh, let's say for example, they could give you uh, six vignettes 
followed by six MCQs, which will be 36 multiple choice questions. Okay. Then, of course, they would give you another two vignettes with four MCQs behind those, which is your eight MCQs, giving you a total then of 44, which is your 44 over there. Or they could decide to give you a complete uh, um, all 11. They could say, well, I'll give you 11 vignettes with four MCQs behind those, okay? And, of course, that then will equal to 44 MCQs as well. We're not given exact detail of how they're going to be asking them. My sense will be quite close to this. I think they're going to stick quite closely to the sixes for now, uh, mainly six vignettes and then and, and, and uh, six multiple choice questions behind the vignettes and uh, slightly fewer ones then on the the four multiple choice uh, MCQs behind those. And then that's your paper. Okay, so uh, you get through those quite easily, we hope. Okay, generally speaking, of course, guys, the, 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 in general, the guys are much more uh, uh, familiar with MCQs, and we found that the guys do much better in uh, exam session number two. We're going to be training it, so most of our focus, not most of our, but a, but a large amount of the focus is on constructed response, just to make sure that we are completely familiar with that particular section. The guys can really score as high as possible over there to make sure they get through this paper. And we have a whole group of CFA level three charter holders, okay, which is exactly what we want. Okay, we don't want to see you back here again, CFA level three. Okay, we want you to be done and dusted with us and then come and visit us again uh, for our Kaya program or something exciting like that or FRM thereafter. But we do want your CFA to be done in this particular attempt. Okay, so we've gone through the, the, the exam as it would look as it's changed from what it was in the past okay, to what you can expect uh, computer-based in 2021. Okay, obviously guys, I'm not going to speak too much over here. We just put this in for you guys. CFA Level 3 is much more involved with the integration and judgment of the material, okay, as opposed to what you saw in the past, uh, which you may have found a little bit easier. Of course, this is a much more integrative. You've got to justify the knowledge. You've got to really put your put your head about you in this particular particular section. Uh, a, 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 a nice challenge, of course, uh, ahead of us. Okay. We move on over here, guys. I just want to spend a few moments just going through the um, the exam waiting. And what I've done is I've put it in exactly the same format as you would have seen it, of course, um, for CFA Level 1 and Level 2. I've now put it for you in the same format, the same 10 topics. Okay. But, of course, we know quants is gone. Okay. Uh, FRA is gone. Financial reporting analysis is gone. And CORPFIN is gone as well. Okay. What is left? Ethics is there. Most likely, guys, and I'm not giving you this, please don't hold this to me, and that's why, of course, you'll see I will give you my email address. You can even have my cell phone number, my mobile number, but no, I'm not giving you my physical address in case I say something and someone wants to come and find me at my house thereafter. Okay, so I'm not saying for sure, but generally speaking, okay, this would come into paper two, the MCQ section. Okay, economics, 5 to 10 percent, no real place where they ask it any more than any other place. Okay, um, equities, okay, interesting, generally alts, 5 to 10 percent finds itself, so my apologies, uh, finds itself in uh, paper one, generally, and I, again, no, I'm just giving you a little bit of a sense of what we've seen in the past, nothing overly Portman 35 to 40 percent is yes, much more weighted to paper one, the constructed response paper. Okay, um, the rest of your asset classes, generally speaking, you would find those in uh, MCQs. No real guidance given other than that. Okay, but look at if you have a look over here, where is your big section? What's interesting, and it's not an easy section, guys, but they do tend to put a little bit of weight on it, is 15 to 20 percent for fixed income. That's big. Okay, so a lot of stuff coming from fixed income. And remember, when I'm looking now at my four asset classes, okay, equities, bonds, alts, and derivatives, okay, um, 
it's no longer looking and they're not it's, they're not saying to you do me a favor work out what the value of this equity investment is you saw that in level two that you that's done and dusted they're looking to look at and you'll see most of the topics are equity strategies fixed income strategies and how they apply within a portfolio context so a lot more going here so you may say oh that's nice and easy I've seen these four asset classes before yes you have and there's an assumption of course of knowledge of those uh, various um, uh, asset classes but it's much more a strategic view that they're looking at using strategies for example fixed income immunization strategies okay passive equity investment strategies derivatives guys many people find a little bit difficult but we're going to go through those of course in great detail and remember of course they've put currency strategy together with derivatives uh, together so those form uh, one big section together so if people didn't like currencies and derivatives, well, now they put them together as one slightly more difficult uh, section all in one. And of course, the, the, the entire, the, the, the big focus, of course, then, guys, for CFA Level 3 is, of course, your portfolio management. Okay. Let's have a look at some of the numbers. How do they stack up? Okay. 317 learning outcome statements. Of course, us at EDGE, we cover each and every one of those. All 38 readings are covered, and of course, all 16 study sessions are covered as well. What's interesting is the study sessions tend to go down as we move through the levels. 19 study sessions for CFA Level 1, 17 for Level 2, and 16 for Level 3, but as does the complexity increase as well. So the, the, the sheer volume of work is lower in CFA Level 3, guys, okay? Uh, but having said that, okay, the volume is lower but the complexity, of course, is increased. Okay, and the way that they examine is, of course, also slightly more difficult. Okay, um, we talk about, uh, hopefully by now you guys have got a, quite a good sense of um, uh, what we've, uh, what you can expect. Okay, just a little brief one, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, of course, guys, is because you've seen this all one time before. Okay. Um, not one time, hopefully many times before, okay, is your uh, calculator policy as either the Texas guys or that's the HP12C, but by now you are more than uh, familiar with that. There's nothing more I can teach you on that, okay. I just want to spend a, a moment or two over here, okay, um, in terms of the what we, what we spoke about earlier is exam windows. What is an exam window? Okay, because you've never had exam windows before. If I take you back to the 2020 exam, you'll remember, if memory serves, I think the exam was on the 5th of June 2020. Yes, I know it never happened, but as you see, it was on a fixed day. Those fixed days, fixed days of when you can expect your exam, those are now done. Okay, and why is that? The reason for that is we've moved from fixed days to exam windows, and the exam window, let's talk about the May window, which moves from... Uh, 25th of May, it's about a seven day period to the 1st of June, okay, he said you can write on any of those days, not all those days, but any of those days, you pick yourself one of those days, uh, if it's available, you will be allocated it, and that'll be the day that you write. What does it mean that's the day that you write? That's the day that you go into the exam center, wherever your exam center is located, you'll be given a computer, um, and that'll be the computer that you write on. Of course, given the numbers of the CFA uh, 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 candidates, there's not enough computers for everybody to write on, on exactly the same day as there were in the past. So we get allocated exam windows and everybody writes uh, on the day that they are allocated. Uh, my sense is that the way that it's gonna work is very similar to the way that the CHI system works is when you register for your exam, you, you register for the May exam, okay? Um, you pick yourself, uh, a day within that window, anywhere between, so you can choose, well, you want the 20, want to write on the 25th of May, 26th, 27th, etc. And if that date is available, yes, you will be allocated that day, and that day is your writing day. Now, yes, you will be writing on a different day than perhaps your friend will be writing. Have no fear, you won't be getting the same exam. Okay, number two, you'll be signing a pledge that you will not, and of course we know this, of course, from the standard of professional conduct number seven, where of course you're not allowed to share any information about the exam anyway, so um, that's not a worry for them, but in terms of cheating or anything like that, you'll all be given different exams of similar difficulty. Okay, so, um, so yes, you will be given a different exam to that of your friend. Okay. Um, 
my sense is the earlier that you book, the, 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 the more uh, availability there will be, and of course, the, the more chance you can select the day uh, that will work best, of course, for you. Okay, and that's obviously how the exam windows work. That's a, a quite a stark difference, of course, to how it worked in the past when you were given one specific day, okay, um, and that was the day that you wrote on with, uh, okay, good. Okay, and of course, um, those guys will uh, also have uh, the November exam available, the November window available to them, but as you can see, that's a slightly shorter window, 23rd to the 25th of November. So if you do know that you want to write in November, of course, um, uh, get in early to be able to pick your, your date, uh, your, your specific date within that those time frames. Okay. Um, very briefly, and th those guys that have been part of the EDGE program before, are very familiar with this approach. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. We talk about our, just clean up over here a little bit, uh, we talk about our four C's as part of the EDGE approach, okay. Uh, number one is the first C is the consistency. When you talk about consistency, guys, we're talking about an everyday approach, okay, everyday work, okay. Generally speaking, I always prefer the guys to do a little bit every day as opposed to coming on the back end and just trying to, uh, the last three weeks and try uh, eight hours a day just trying to kid yourselves. You may need that anyway. Okay. Um, but generally speaking, I, I find the approach to be a little bit more effective uh, and uh, a consistent approach if we do a little bit every day, okay, um, and build up that. When I talk about consistency, okay, we're talking about, let's say, if I talk about the weekdays, I'm talking about anywhere between one to one and a half hours a day, okay. Um, and I know that that's hot because you're all going to say to me, one and a half hours a day, where am I going to find that? And I don't know. Each person, of course, is different. We don't prescribe when everyone's going to find the extra hour, hour and a half every day. But it is needed, it is required in order to be successful in this particular program. But I do feel for you because it's not easy, uh, particularly in this, the current environment that we find ourselves in, that everybody is really battling for time, everyone's trying to protect their jobs, their positions, so it's, it's really not an, easy, not an easy ask. Okay, then when you talk about the weekend, I'm asking you for another eight hours approximately. And that's between Saturday and Sunday. Some like to, might like to work for uh, four hours on Saturday, four on Sunday. Some might like to work all day Saturday and then take Sunday off, which is not a bad idea at all as well, or vice versa. That'll give you approximately, guys, 15 hours a week, which will give you more than enough time um, to work through the program. And of course, I am going to ask you for a little bit more time uh, on the back end as we get there the last month as we move into exam and revision. Okay, but remember guys, this consistent approach is an everyday approach, keeps you in the program, keeps you immersed in the program, and then to the extent, of course, that uh, you have a terrible day, I always ask the guys, just do five minutes, just keep in the program. If you had a really terrible day, you've got a migraine headache, you're feeling terrible, it's your brother's wedding, anything of that nature, okay, um, just put in a few minutes just to make sure that you keep in the program, because we always find if you miss one day, you typically end up missing uh, a little bit more than that as well, which of course is not what we want. Okay, um, because as you can see, the the level of work is is extensive. You've got to keep on working. It's a it's a it's a constant, everyday uh, work that one has to keep putting through. That's our first C. We talk about the next C, which is commitment. But I don't need to talk about that to level three people because of course you are completely committed. I do hope I've spelled commitment correctly. I'm never sure how many M's or T's there are over there. Uh, but the good news for you guys and good news for me is, of course, it's not a spelling program. Of course, we do like to be professional and get the spelling right, of course. Okay. Uh, but the good news for you particularly, okay, is that even when you write your constructive response on the computer and you type out your answers, and yes, they are longer worded answers, they're not just MCQs, part of uh, exam session one, the constructive response, okay, there's no penalizing you for uh, spelling. Of course, as I say, uh, we do like it to be professional and nice looking, but <clears throat> no penal. So don't stress about that. No penalizing for not for grammar and not for spelling as well. Okay, uh, we move a little bit forward in terms of our uh, uh, the various C's. Okay, we've dealt with consistency. Okay, which of course is very important. We've also dealt with um, commitment. I talk about my third C, which is not really a C. We're talking about concentration, 
uh, concentration is I'm looking more at focus. Okay. In other words, when we ask you to work, I really want that work to be focused work. You know, when when you when you're working on it, okay. Um, far rather put in one strong hour than four average weak hours and you come out and say, Phew, I did four hours, sure, did I do well last night? And I say, well, what did you do for four hours? And no one's overly sure. We don't want to sit, we don't, we don't bench occupiers, people that just occupy benches, occupy seats. We want people, of course, to be outstanding workers and, and focused on the time that they work far rather one good hour than four average hours guys I'm very if, if you are feeling too tired to work I always say go take yourself a little bit of a rest on the couch lie down for half an hour get your energy get your strength back and then come back and work again okay um, and if that's not possible then we go back to my rule go back to rule number one which is the consistency rule work for five minutes so you've done something for the day and then go to bed rather and, and renew your energy for the for the new day Okay, and the last C is calm, which is probably one of your most important guys, calm, relaxed, okay, uh, very important if you are an exerciser, keep exercising, if you eat well, continue to eat well, if you, con if you go to movies once a week, cinema, do that, keep doing it guys, keep a normal even kill. Okay, don't try and do strange things now in these five months. Okay, you'll, you'll, for the last three, four weeks, yes, you are, we are going to require a little bit more intense work from you. But in, up until the lead up there, guys, work normally, work calmly, and keep all of this in perspective. Remember, you're trying to get the four C's, you're trying to get the big C by using the approach of the four C's. The big C, of course, is the CFA. Okay, but remember, guys, and I, don't, I hope I'm not insulting the CFA in any way, it's just the CFA. It's not life, it's not health, okay, it, one has to remember that the CFA in and of itself is very important and it's obviously what we're trying to achieve and we are all in CFA level 3, we just desperately want the last little bit over here which we will get, but it can't come at the expense of everything else, not your health, not your sanity, not your, not your life, you've got to keep it in perspective, keep normal, keep healthy and keep well, okay, and then yes you will get this. Okay, but it, it just just put it all into perspective, guys. Obviously, one of the other C's that we've seen, everything seems to be C-based, which is COVID. Okay, let's put things into a little bit of perspective for everybody um, in terms of the importance of how, where everything fits into a bit of a global uh, point of view. Okay, so keep calm. I've seen some other C's as well, guys. Um, some of the, the the girls particularly seem to like chocolate. That's also great. I uh, just didn't want to put too many C's in because it just tends to uh, be a bit much. But of course, chocolate is great. Okay, if it works for you, you go ahead. Um, some other people like crying as the C. I don't like that one. That doesn't fit nicely into my calm. Cool, calm, and collected, guys. Just relaxed. We'll do the best we can. And remember, it's just CFA. Um, and keep it, keep, give it its, 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 its the perspective that it so requires. Okay, good. Um, is CFA level three much more difficult than everything else? No, it's not. Okay, um, the level of the, the amount of work is slightly less, guys, in terms of what you've expected in the past. Okay, but the difficulty is going to be a little bit increased as well. So you can expect a little bit of a little bit of both. Okay, so, um, but no, it, 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 it's just one more level of CFA which we are going to go out there and and get, and that's all. Nothing, nothing more uh, fancy, of course, than that. Okay, we talk a little bit about what the Edge program will do for you. Okay, I'm going to do this via the next slide that I've got, which is our timetable. Okay, now. We've, we've essentially got two main programs that we work with, okay, uh, a program number one, okay, is a completely online program. What do you get with a completely online program? Well, you're going to get a complete set of notes, okay, notes, summaries, questions, okay, and of course the big one, of course, you're going to get um, uh, videos. And the videos are on every single set of notes, on every single set of questions that we've got you. We, 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 no, sorry, not every set of questions, but every single set of notes. Okay, and it go, takes you through the entire syllabus step by step by step. The downside, which a lot of people say about the videos, is an upside and a downside. The downside is they are pre-recorded. Okay, um, so they're not live. 
the upside of that is you can watch them whenever you like, you've got full access to them. All of the stuff is available on our Google Classroom platform. You can watch as many times um, as you would like. It's all available to you. Okay, um, as are the notes in PDF format, etc., etc. It's all available to you. You can make use of it as and when you wish. Of course, we put together what we call over here date to be completed by in terms of our schedule. Um, try as best you can to stick to that. And the reason, of course, to that is because it, it has been pre-planned to make sure that you finish everything then by the 19th of April to hop into what we call our revision and exam program and then you can uh, be nasty on time to write at the end of May for the May window. Okay, good. Okay, that's our online program. Okay, how then does our what we call our blended program change from the online program? The blended program is exactly the same thing as you saw over there. There's notes, there's summaries, etc., etc., carbon copy. The difference being is that if you look over here, I'm just going to pick on ethics over here. Okay, when I look at ethics over there, study session one and two, date to be completed by 18th of January. 2021. Now, why do I want you to complete by then? For two reasons. Number one is because that's a good time to complete it by to make sure that you can complete the rest of the syllabus, okay, and etc. etc. on time. But when I say date to be completed by, what do I want you to have completed by the 21st of the 18th of Jan? I want you to have gone through the notes and the videos. Hopefully, some questions as well. What available to you? Now. If that is so that I want you to have completed notes, videos, and questions, by then what are we going to be adding over here in terms of our blended learning and what we call our live Zoom sessions? Three things I want to add in over here via a live session. Number one is what I want to do, if in that particular topic matter there are some very difficult uh, 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 sections, I want to go through that with you directly when we meet on that same day, that's why I want you to be finished on the 18th of Jan. So we meet on the 18th of Jan. So I can say, well, you've gone through all the notes, you've looked at the videos, you've done questions, let me discuss some more difficult concepts with you. Number two, I want to do some questions with you. And in that same two hour session, number three is it is your session as well. In other words, if you've got any questions that you would like, you're more than uh, able to ask them during that particular time period. Of course, you've got access to me, not just in that time period as well, but other time periods as well. As the guys know, you're more than welcome to reach out, okay, um, and I will be here to assist you um, with pleasure. Okay, and we'll do that week by week, and as you can see, let's pick on any other one. For example, portfolio management for institutions to be finished by the 8th of March. Okay, we then jump into class over here on the 8th of March, 5.30 till 7.30, and discuss those particular topics together as a team. It's very nice, the live session, of course, because it motivates everybody, and it's, fortunately or unfortunately, it's the best we can do within a COVID environment. Okay, and then when we're done with all of that, guys, then we move into the revision exam programs, which is a three-day intensive revision course, 30th of April, 1 May, Sick and 2 May, okay, um, the exact format of that year is yet to be decided, that will be COVID dependent, whether it will be a live face-to-face -face session uh, or pre-recorded or a mixture pre-recorded on Zoom, and then of course we run into six exams, which is obviously where you're going to get your exam practice uh, from. Okay, that then brings us to the end of this intro video, I'm going to leave you guys with my email address, okay, um, for those that wish to make further contact, to reach out, okay. Um, of course, I'll give you our email, uh, uh, our website as well. It's edgefit.co.za. Everyone says, does the fit stand for fitness? Well, in retrospect, perhaps we could say maybe it does, but in truth, fit stands for edge fit finance and investment training. If anybody wants to reach out or go and visit the website, all of the details of the course are on there as well. Please, please feel free uh, to do that. Um, and after that, of course, uh, as you can see here, okay, we will be starting our live sessions on the 18th of Jan 2021. For those that wish to join us, okay, you can just register on the, the website. Okay, Some guys are already on the program already and have been for a while due to COVID. Okay, um, But other than that, guys, we will see you in class on Monday. Okay, the 18th of Jan. Have a great one until then.